Welcome to the World Radio Communication Conference WRC 2023 here in Dubai in the United Arab Emirates where I've got the great pleasure of being joined today in the studio by John Omo, who's the Secretary General of the African Telecommunication Union. John, welcome to the studio. Thank you. Thank you very much for the welcome. Good to see you. Good to see you too. <laughs> it's been a little while, but uh, um, we obviously catch up with each other regularly. I just sure. wanted to uh, speak to you with regards to WRC in particular. Obviously, you're, you've, uh, you're here representing uh, the Africa region. I just wanted to ask you uh, about WRC. Why is WRC particularly important as a conference? Uh, thank you very much for the question. One is essentially that WRC is the perfect opportunity. In fact, the only... Uh, opportunity worldwide where the world comes and, and, and talks about uh, what radio resources should be allocated for what sort of services globally. And then based on that, uh, we, we membership then, you know, commit themselves to the use of those resources, the allocation of those resources, the assignment of those radio resources for services that have been agreed worldwide for those resources. That's one. Secondly, it's important in terms of a pointer to technology companies. Uh, much of this industry is driven by the private sector. And so once the membership commits themselves to the application or the use of radio resources for those uh, services that are agreed, it gives a pointer to communications companies, the private sector, research organizations, universities, in terms of the direction uh, in which investment decisions should be made in terms of either research, in terms of application of their organization's resources for purposes of ensuring that uh, the resources that are allocated uh, for whatever services are agreed on are, are channeled appropriately. Now, Africa is a very large region. It has all sorts of uh, challenges and opportunities. Perhaps you could share with us uh, what you think the principal ones are at this moment in time. I think time. the greatest challenge for Africa currently is still the issue of connectivity. Quite a number of our population uh, is still off the communications grid, be it Wi-Fi, be it uh, satellite, be it uh, IMT. And so we, we, we come here with the, 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 the attitude that Africa is still good for business in terms of connectivity. Uh, the challenges that uh, other regions do face, of course, are also important. But for us, connectivity is, is the key challenge. So for as long as we, if we can get at this conference, negotiate and obtain resources that would facilitate connectivity in Africa, then for that long, we will have, we will have sorted one of the key challenges that, that we have. Now, uh, it also comes with the, 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 the nature of the continent in terms of uh, a third of the continent is, is, is a desert. And, and rural based population is quite uh, uh, large as compared to other regions of this globe. And so it comes with the connectivity challenge of, you know, uh, connecting villages that are far apart, towns that are far apart. And so a mix of various technologies is, is important to Africa in terms of connecting either at the level of backhaul, the level of uh, fiber, or at the level of satellites in reaching uh, these far-flung uh, communities that live in the continent. And are things speeding up there? Are things uh, improving, do you think? Yes, we, we have seen not just at the level of infrastructure, but at the level of applications in Africa uh, that things are really uh, heating up. Uh, Africa has uh, the largest number of, of youthful population worldwide, very agile in terms of uh, their quest for, for knowledge, their quest for uh, opportunities that can improve their, 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 that, that lot. And so we're seeing a lot of interesting applications from young people from our universities in terms of meeting the, the peculiar challenges that the continent faces, one of which, of course, is the well-known M-Pesa. And, and we are seeing quite a number of, of opportunities in the radio sector using radio resources for uh, radio-based apps in terms of the challenges that the continent faces. And e-health as well, I would imagine. E-health, e-education, e-agriculture, name it. <laughs> yeah. Fabulous. Now, what are some of the key outcomes you think uh, will be of most uh, interest to the Africa region for, from WRC? One of which I've already mentioned, the fact that not a single technology will unlock the connectivity challenges in Africa. And so uh, we come here with an open mind where we 
want to see a mix of various technologies, be it IMT, be it satellite, be it fiber, be it, uh, you know, uh, services such as Wi-Fi, an interplay of these various technologies to solve the challenge of connect connectivity in Africa. We do uh, see the need, of course, that uh, 6G, uh, 5G, and, and then eventually 6G is, is increasingly uh, becoming relevant, and so we need uh, more resources for IMT. And so the opportunity to, to, to still squeeze certain of the resources that are available uh, for IMT would be, would be a, an opportunity that Africa is looking forward to. But that uh, is not to say that other technologies are, are less important. We do see the need to increasingly protect uh, uh, resources that have been traditionally uh, assigned or, or allocated to the satellite community so that the rural population that we have in Africa in terms of our education challenges, our health challenges, our agricultural challenges can be met by the satellite, not just from B to C, but B, B to B to C. And, and, also, and also increasingly we are seeing satellite technologies uh, uh, innovating so that, so that the B to C part of, of uh, satellites being able to reach the consumers directly uh, is important uh, to us. The, the other one is, of course, the decision that was made in WRC 19 in terms of uh, Resolution 599, where countries in Africa that had lost uh, certain of their satellite resources, especially for broadcasting, were granted a waiver to reclaim uh, these slots, and quite a number of African countries, save for two, have had the opportunity to reclaim them. And we still see ourselves working with the international community, with the, inter uh, with the International Telecommunications Union, to assist those of countries that are, have not claimed these resources to do so for purposes of facilitating satellite broadcasting uh, in Africa. And lastly, uh, of course, is the fact that uh, we have one country in Africa that was born when the satellite resources had been planned globally. And we do see the need to ensure that that country, which is South Sudan, is given the opportunity to, to also be catered for in the planning for satellite services. So uh, an outcome that guarantees a mix of technologies between satellite, between Wi-Fi, between IMT, between uh, of course, recognizing the importance of fiber for connectivity is an outcome that Africa would welcome out of this conference. Finally, as Secretary General of the African Telecommunication Union, do you have a message uh, for participants here at the WRC as well as our viewers and listeners around the world? Uh, thank you very much. I think, I think uh, radio communication is, is the lifeblood of, of communications, uh, radio resources, and, and so once we, this community globally would have agreed on the need to assign uh, radio resources or allocate radio resources for various services, I think back in our countries, uh, in our uh, companies, we need to ensure that we design our systems, we uh, assign radio spectrum for services uh, only that have been agreed in this community because short of that, then you start causing interference. The other one is, of course, this is a negotiation process, and uh, sometimes everyone comes out uh, unhappy, but that is the reason we negotiate, otherwise we would not come here to negotiate. And so I feel that uh, let's give it our best uh, in terms of uh, preferring our positions, but also recognize the fact that we've come to negotiate, and that is, is the spirit that we should have, that each of us will come out having gotten, out, uh, having gotten something but not everything that, that they came with uh, from their respective organizations or countries. Fair enough. Well, John Emery, thank you for joining me in the studio and look forward to catching up with you again very soon. My pleasure, as usual. Thank you very much. Thank you. And if you've enjoyed this interview, which I'm sure you will have, then please check out our other interviews on our YouTube channel as well as podcasts on SoundCloud, Spotify, or wherever you listen to your podcasts from. And check out our website at www.itu.int for further information. Thanks for tuning in.